activated, then it can only mean danger, and I mean fatal. Everybody and welcome back to another brand new video where we reach the final um, episode in this series of videos looking back at series one of Doctor Who 15 years to the day after each episode aired. We do today of course reach the finale that aired exactly 15 years ago today. It was The Parting of the Ways. So yes it's quite a, a familiar, a well-known, a well-remembered and well-loved I think finale to series one. A still a very iconic series of Doctor Who that reintroduced the program to a whole new series of fans. Um, and as you most of you guys know, I'm sure over the last 12 weeks I've been looking back at each episode as it aired um, 15 years on. So if you haven't seen any of those, please do go and check them out now. Um, there's a whole playlist of them with all of them on there where you can just look at sort of here. My thoughts, having watched each of these episodes exactly 15 years on from when they aired and just giving a few general thoughts and look back on them. Not sort of a pure review, but just a bit of context of them around the time and just yet yeah, a little look back at each of them. Um, but today, of course, we are looking back at the parting of the ways. So I spoke, about, I spoke last week about how um, this two-parter is one of my favourite finales to Doctor Who and, and I absolutely watching this second part again I still completely agree that and feel that there's of course a lot of nostalgia but I do fundamentally think that this is a great story a great plot that's so well put together the fundamental plots there but the production side also puts it puts it all together to create a fundamentally brilliant story that I think is such the perfect sort of cap off to series one of Doctor Who as a show and it feels like I know Russell's talked about this in the past about how when he first of course wrote series one and they were putting it all together they they had no idea whether in reality it was going to work or not for a wider audience and whether actually they'd do this 13 episode run it'd be great but that they would never get any more of it and this would all be all there was of this sort of one-off Doctor Who reboot type thing they just didn't really know whether it would go anywhere and I think that even if it hadn't this would have this was such an excellent self-contained series in many ways of telling this story of the, of the Ninth Doctor coming off the back of the Time War and how he's been so affected and impacted by that decision he had to make of wiping out all the Daleks and all of his own people the Time Lords and doing that and being responsible for that and it's something that's gradually in different ways explored through the series often using Rose as a way to kind of try and rein him back in a little bit and show him the error of sort of that he doesn't have to be like that anymore that he, he can change and become a more sort of not caring person but a more um, understanding person and more willing to to change from that person who destroyed all of his own race it's explored a lot in Dalek of course and then sort of reaches ahead really in this two part this two part finale where he's kind of presented with the same dilemma all over again of wiping out all the Daleks and all the humans on earth and that that moral dilemma of could he actually do it all over again and of course it sort of brings us to this seminal moment where he's got his hands on the trigger as it were to kill all Daleks and all humans alike and he realizes that actually in this moment he is a coward and that he's a coward any day as he says is it's a great line and and realizing that that actually he isn't the same person that he was in the time war he's not the war doctor anymore and that he can't do this he can't wipe out all these people all over again these innocent lives he just cannot do that because he it's almost like he's become the real doctor again rather than what we obviously we term as the war doctor but this other person who came, who took, who became the doctor but in the time war but ultimately wasn't really the same person um and just it just because of the things he had to do in the time war he very much was this this war-torn character and person that it's taken this ninth doctor this whole journey with rose and with his experiences to be able to kind of come back from and and bring himself out of and so i just think it's so fascinatingly explored throughout series one it's very much gradually built up whereas the tv movie for example went wrong by just going throwing every single bit of lore you could think about into one big movie series one does such an effective job of gradually bringing things into each episode you gradually introduce the doctor then the tardis and then gallifrey and then eventually the time war the daleks come in later in the series and just adding in all these elements so gradually that it doesn't feel like an overload but it feels like such a perfectly paced introduction to the show and all the different aspects and developing this this dark past for the doctor in the time war and the effect that's had on him and then him realizing as we do in this finale that that all his work has basically gone to waste because all the Daleks are back again they've all they they escaped the time war the Dalek Emperor has escaped the time war created a whole new breed of Daleks that are half human to an extent even though they don't want to admit it and are so dangerous and it just feels like he's completely wasted all the pain and 
destruction and strife he's gone through, the fact he wiped out all his own people feels such a waste. And so I think just part of that among everything else and the way his character developed makes him realise that actually he's not going to do this again, this isn't the right thing to do, this isn't what the Doctor should do. And yeah, it just it just feels such a, an important moment in the show, I think. And so yeah, it just it just reinforces that point that I make that this is such a brilliantly crafted whole series. Rather than just being a good set of episodes kind of thrown together into one series, there's such a good long-running plot thread of this um of the Doctor and his his sort of development as a character out of the Time War. And it just feels like it so perfectly reaches its head in this finale. And I think it was a great way to do it by having bringing back the Daleks into the show. As I mentioned in the previous video I did on Bad Wolf, it was great to see a huge Dalek fleet back again after we just saw a single Dalek in Dalek to have the whole lot turn up again for, for this finale is so great. And that's that's obviously so much more visually seen in this this second part when the Daleks are much more a feature. Seeing the Dalek Emperor is just so cool, having not seen him since Evil the Daleks, um, to have the Dalek Emperor back, having it be the Dalek Emperor who saved the Daleks. His ship survived in the Time War and sort of threw, flew through time and space to back to this wherever they are now and then they hid away, gradually built themselves up by sort of using humans, basically bringing them in and find, trying to find cells of them to be able to use, to be able to put into Daleks to create Daleks out of them, which is actually something I completely forgotten about this story was that's, that's the whole plot line, was that they were using humans and cells of human beings to create the mutations and create the Daleks that they could then put in these cases and, and create these 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 destructive creatures. Um, and that, that sort of fascinating idea the Doctor gives that the Daleks hate their own existence because part of them is not Dalek, part of them is impure, part of them is not acceptable to themselves and so they hate who they are but that means they just want to be as destructive and deadly as possible to just create more and more Daleks and conquer the universe because they hate their own existence. I love that idea and I think it's what makes these Daleks so dangerous and destructive and in many ways I think this story shows the Daleks at maybe their more most destructive that they've ever been. I don't. I almost feel like this is the best appearance of the Daleks in the whole of New Who. It's a bold claim, I know, but I just feel like there's no other story where you see quite so much ruthless destruction from Daleks, so much determination. You see, the amount of people they kill off in this story is bonkers and is not really something that we ever visually see, at least, in any other Doctor Who story that I can think of. Certainly in New Who, there's so many more stories in the future where they don't really do anything much and they don't actually kill many people. Of course, the Moffat era in particular had a real problem with that. But even, I think, Stolen Earth and Journey's End, as much as the there's the implication of destruction and there's lots of moments where sort of there's general destruction and obviously destroying the Earth and all these planets and things like that. But in reality, seeing them fundamentally storming through, taking over this taking over Satellite 5, just going through and destroying people left, right and centre, killing them, exterminating them. I just don't think we've seen that so much in, in other episodes of the show. And so it's so great to see them as such a real threat, a real presence in this story. I think and it just really heightens the threat and heightens the odds that the Doctor's up against where it feels like it is completely impossible to defeat them. So yes, I do think that was a real, real strength of this story was the way the Daleks are portrayed, the idea behind them, as I say, of them being half human. If, if anything, it's something that actually isn't explored as much as I maybe would like. Um, because it's actually such a fascinating concept that these Daleks hate themselves, that they're half human, that the Emperor's behind it all and he's basically playing God in this story. And as much as these elements are explored a little bit, there's a few lines of dialogue from the Doctor and, and things like that, it doesn't feel like they're explored as much as they could. You could almost have a, a Dalek having an existential crisis because he realises he's half human or something because he gets a bit damaged or something like that. Um, and then goes mad because he can't deal with the fact that there's some human inside him, which in some ways is explored in um, Dalek as well, where you've got the Dalek that doesn't accept himself and wants to die for that reason um, because he's got some emotion and developing that and not killing people and, and all those all that, that that aspect that's explored in that story so I guess maybe it would have been a little bit of retreading the same ground but I don't know I just feel like there was a little bit more they could have done with it there I mean it's not a, a big detriment to the story but maybe there's something more that could have been done to that I do think in particular things like the pacing of the story are fantastic it just feels like it absolutely rushes through all the way through in a really exciting manner it doesn't really feel like there's too many down points from the main sort of action of the story where, where the well the Doctor and Jack obviously go to save Rose and meet the Daleks and then run away from the Daleks and then go and try and set up the defences on Satellite 5. Then the Daleks are um, turning up and gradually making their way up through different floors, killing people off, going down to the bottom floor to kill all the humans as well. It's just, there was just a great real, a constant threat and a constant kind of pace to the action I think that where it, it never really slowed down too much. Of course there were the, all the scenes with Rose back on Earth which were very much a change of pace and, and as much as I, I think they're quite good, 
I kind of, part of me was just wanting to get back to the scenes on Task Light 5 because they were kind of more interesting and exciting maybe than the sort of developing character moments of, of um, Rose, Mickey and a bit of Jackie as well in there. Some pretty, again, Mickey getting pretty harshly treated because Rose is just like, there's nothing left for her on Earth for me at all. And he's like, really? And she's like, yeah, nothing. And that you can just tell how much that affects Mickey again. Uh, I talked about in the Boomtown video about how uh, Mickey is is not best served is, as a, and just exploring the kind of real bad stuff that Rose has done to him and then seemingly she feels quite apologetic about that by the end of Boomtown and then the Doctor is in trouble and she wants to save him and so Mickey gets completely forgotten about again so I feel like this good from a point of view of at least kind of making it clear to Mickey again how little Rose actually does care about him but it also shows just how harshly she's treating him once again and how much just she's totally committed and focused on the Doctor about how she can't just come back home and live a normal life anymore that, that that's gone that that doesn't have any interest that doesn't that isn't a life to her anymore the only life is with the Doctor and traveling through time and space and visiting all these aliens and planets as much as he tries to say oh no it's not about that it's about the Doctor blah 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 and it's it's about the attitude that the Doctor has of not giving up and, and all of that and yet that's a true point it's a good point but also she's addicted to the lifestyle of, of traveling with the Doctor I think and she can't just come back to Earth and just settle down into a normal life again so I feel like it's a good point I mean I feel from quite early on that's kind of becoming the way but you feel by this point in the series it's so very clear that there's nothing else in life that she wants and then that's so heavily explored in series two as well of, of Rose obviously falling in love with the 10th Doctor and, and, and all of that and then having to be parted from him um, and dealing with that all, all of that situation that fallout in series two but yeah I just feel like that's such an important moment for Rose and the, the, the length she's willing to go to to try and save and help the Doctor. This is a story of course which brings um, to a head all of the bad wolf hints that have been going and running throughout the series trying to um, get well we up to this point you don't really fully understand exactly what's going on There's, there is a really cool and interesting moment where um, the Doctor's like the doctor's talking to the Dalek Emperor and he's obviously asking well bad wolf what's that all about and then when the Dalek Emperor's like it's nothing to do with me um, it's just a really great moment as the audience to suddenly sort of because kind of by this point you're like oh well surely it's just the Dalek that it was part of the whole Dalek setup plan to lead them here or something along those lines but then the Dalek Emperor's actually like no, it's nothing to do with me. What are you talking about? And you're like, oh, okay. What? Well, what is Bad Wolf all about then? Is there another secondary villain behind this? Which would have been quite cool. Um, but it's ultimately not that. And it's all to do with a message that Rose or the, the, the Bad Wolf, Heart of the TARDIS entity, has created for itself to be able to lead Rose here to this point when she sees Bad Wolf on the playgrounds on Earth. That's a really cool moment, that panning shot out and Rose realising that actually she's got to go and go back that this has this is actually a message and instruction to herself that she's got to do something about this and she's got to try and get back and help the doctor out and then the great scenes of absorbing the heart of the TARDIS and um, turning back up to come and save the doctor and I, know, I read a few sort of reviews and comments about this story and one of the kind of criticisms was the do S machina the classic idea of a, a, a plot being wrapped up in no time in a very sort of silly easy way and to an extent I can see that because it feels like the Doctor kind of has his character development moment of I am a coward I'm not going to kill all the Daleks and the humans and he's like okay I'm going to close my eyes and die now that's it I give up and then Rose turns up full of the heart of the TARDIS destroys everything saves Captain Jack brings him back to life and boom the story's over and that that kind that was kind of it so I can kind of see why some people felt it was maybe a little bit of an underwhelming resolution but I do think that when you look over the various stories that Russell's written fundamentally he does and I think it's it is a fundamental struggle in Doctor Who to create a satisfying resolution to a big serious story problem when you've got the Doctor surrounded by Daleks that are about to kill him and destroy the whole universe it's quite hard to come up with a really clever, good, satisfying way of getting out of that, I think. That is fundamentally a struggle of writing Doctor Who, is you set your characters up into such deep trouble that you have to come up with something bonkers to be able to get them out of it again. And so, I, I, obviously, I, I do think that Russell has a particular problem with that. You look at the Series 4 finale, where it's the Doctor Donna gets created and she flicks a few buttons, the Daleks go spinning and they all get destroyed. Um, that's a bit ridiculous. You've got, um, let's just press the reset button in the Series 3, 3 finale and let's go back in time by a year and destroy them all. Oh yeah, great. That's another one of those. So clearly Russell does just, particularly in finales, not always, not 
as much as they're not terrible ideas, they are also quite simplistic ideas that are able to just reverse everything and bring us back to normal and save the day. Um, I think it does make really good sense though with the whole Bad Wolf story arc that we're going through with this word being seeded into all these different adventures as a kind of constant warning to Rose that something important is going to be needed from this and to then have that explored in the finale I think is a good idea and I think that works really really effectively in bringing it all together. It's one of the better kind of word arcs of, of a series that Russell used to do because Torchwood is kind of not really going anywhere it's just oh yeah there's this institute called Torchwood oh right what is it yeah that's what it is we find that in the finale and then Saxon being mentioned both Saxon and stuff it just turns out that oh the master's the prime minister i don't feel like they had quite a big sort of payoff as what bad wolf did um in giving rose this this moment of being a god like the ultimate god that, that actually sort of it's, it's almost that the, the emperor dalek is being a fake a false god who wants to be god but he can't quite be it because he doesn't have that power but then you've got Rose sort of um, taking on the, tar the heart of the TARDIS entity and becoming a true god who can control life and death and night and day and the sun and the moon and and all of that and sort of just there's, there's just there uh, several times throughout the story there's there's mentions of, of god and uh, there's mentions of blasphemy and blaspheming against things which is all sort of religious connotations in there and and yet yeah, the, the idea of the emperor dalek wanting to be a god being immortal and then this this godly force that sort of trumps that at the very end with the bad wolf rose where she's able to wipe out everything i think it's just it's quite nice how everything sort of ties up in that sense i think it, it worked really effectively so yes it, as i say it's a little bit of a quick resolution in many ways but of course it does it's not like it doesn't have any consequences because it means that the the Doctor regenerates at the end of the story um, and it's one of those things where you can look at it from sort of multiple perspectives I think there's there is an argument to be had that it feels very kind of tacked on to the end of the story because there's not any real build up to the Doctor regenerating it's just he gets a fatal blow from the part of the TARDIS and boom he regenerates three minutes later that's it um, I can very much see that point of view but I also look at it as uh, and I think it's better to look at it as the idea that um, the sort of story lines, the plot lines that have been building up throughout this series have all been heading for that moment where the Doctor says he's a coward and doesn't kill everybody. And so it feels like it makes sense that the kind of the Ninth Doctor's storyline is done by that point. It's kind of like where that that's all about his character. Everything that he's been working through has kind of reached that seminal moment there. That happens. And it's as much as I would love, I know all us fans would love to have seen more Chris Eccleston. Of course, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be disappointed with that. Absolutely not. I would have loved it. And it's a shame we never got to see any more of it. But I can kind of see that it did very much completely complete the story arc of the Ninth Doctor. And so it wasn't kind of a complete weird change, sort of like a cutting off the story halfway through by having the Doctor regenerate. It felt like this story has been completed now. So it's OK for him to change into a new character and go off in a new direction where there's there's still the impact of the Time Lords being gone and Gallifrey being destroyed. But it's more about them not being there than him kind of struggling with the fact he had to make that decision and destroy everything. It's more just about them not being there anymore when we reach the sort of 10th Doctor's era, I think. And so for me, that's why it does kind of make sense and feel OK in the context to have that scene put onto the end of the story, because it, yeah, it, it, it's, I don't think it's a massive change of pace, but it, as I say, it is a little bit of a, a sudden regeneration, certainly compared to what we get from 10 or 11 or even 12 as well, where there's a lot of build up to the final moment where they regenerate. It's not any real surprise. Um, of course, from a production point of view, we all, we all knew as fans that Chris Eccleston was going at the end of this series. Um, it had been announced a good couple of months before this. It was only about two or three or four episodes into the series that it got announced, mainly because the BBC accidentally leaked it or something, I think, was the problem. Um, so it was, all, it was all a bit of a disaster behind the scenes, um, PR-wise, relationships between cast and crew-wise. It was all a disaster and a mess. Let's be... Let's, be, put, put no bones about it that that was a big problem and I, I, I hope over time we learn a bit more about exactly what happened behind the scenes there but from everything we've heard it was pretty bad and so as I say that that meant that um, it was it was meant that Chris wasn't going to stay on any longer and that we all found out about that well in advance so it wasn't a big shock that this was going to happen at the end of this story but I guess it was always just going to be a case of not knowing exactly how it was going to happen it was intriguing that um, they decided not to release any copies of this episode to the press before it aired um, which is quite a rarity for Doctor as far as I know that's only ever really been done with this story with um the with journey's end and for some reason with the battle of ranscraft coloss but maybe also series 12 more generally didn't get m many pr copies um so there's yeah there's there was a lot of uh, a sort of hush and quietness about not wanting to give away what's happening in the finale as much as you knew the ultimate thing that was happening was chris was leaving but they didn't really want to tell anything about how give anything away about how that was going to happen and what it was going to be like and everything then the next time trailer for this part is pretty good in not giving too much away and i think that works quite quite effectively and to its credit 
Um, and I think ultimately it is a fantastic regeneration scene. There, there, there's no denying it's it's a much more positive and uplifting regeneration scene than what we see particularly from um, David Tennant and Matt Smith, which are very, very sort of played for an emo emotional point of view. Capaldi's is 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 emotive to an extent, but definitely not to the same degree that the previous two are. And of course, him regeneration on his own makes it a big difference as well. Whereas as as Chris Eccleston's Ninth Doctor does feel very much more sort of accepting of what's of his fate and that that's happening. There's no I don't want to go or I'm, I'm really sad about this. No, I don't want to regenerate. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, 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 I've had a great life, um, you were fantastic and so was I, and then regenerating. And it's just such a great sort of, as much as it's a sad moment that he's regenerating, it's also a very kind of positive way of doing it that I'd, I'd, I'd like to see more often in, in New Who, I think, because as much as they were occasionally emotive affairs in the classic series, it was much less so kind of the emotional aspect put onto it. And I think it just depends on the different doc characters to play the Doctor. Um, I'm certainly going to be intrigued to see what happens when Jodie regenerates as to what route they go down with that. But um, yeah, I just think it works so perfectly for Chris. It was such a great, just a great scene that was so well performed by the two of them. Um, the regeneration effect itself is still pretty good. It's, it's clearly dated a little bit, but I still don't think it looks particularly bad. Um, and then seeing David in his first line or two, there's also a really effective moment and a great way to sort of end the story on. Um, which I just think is it, it just really tops off the series and, and, and as I say it just completes this self-contained series one that although of course you get a new doctor at the end of this point and it means therefore it kind of feels like it needs to carry on it feels like because he regenerates at the end of this series, this series that this series can be one self-contained series that could have just stood on its own without any anything ever coming after it and would have just been a great 13 episode run of Doctor Who that, that would have always been remembered but wouldn't have gone anywhere and I think that that, that would have worked because it was so well written and so well crafted into one piece of drama. So yes, overall this really is one brilliant finale to a series of Doctor Who. It's it's definitely one of my favourites, if not my favourite Doctor Who finale there's ever been um, in the show. Series one as a whole is definitely in my sort of top three or four all-time favourite series as well. It's just, it's just, there's so few bad episodes, there's so many great episodes. As I say, as a whole plot line to the whole series and the, the sort of developing stories around the Doctor and around Rose and, and all of that, it just works so, so well, I think, that it's just such a brilliant overall series. Of course, there's nostalgia for me because I watched it in 2005 and I've watched it many times since. Um, but yeah, it's a series that I've always loved and will always remember. But guys, please do put in the comments below your thoughts on The Parting of the Ways. And if you like the series one more generally as well, but what are your thoughts? What are your recollections? Did you watch it at the time? Um, because I certainly did. I can't really remember much about watching it at the time, but I definitely did watch it when it aired. Um, so if you if you did, let me know in the comments below about that. But just any other thoughts you've got on it, I'd love to hear them. Um, but that's about it from this video. I am hoping maybe, I'm not 100% sure of doing some sort of series one look back, sort of just a final video to sort of top this series of videos off with a, a look back over the whole series. Maybe with somebody else as well. I might be getting somebody on the channel to do it with. Um, it's still in the planning phases but hopefully that will all come together in the next maybe week or two just to kind of cap off this final series because it's a great series it's always great to talk about it and of course it's 15 years this year since it aired um, but yeah guys I hope you have enjoyed all of these videos this series of videos but as always remember guys remember to hit that like button that's a struggle if you're new here and I'll see you again very soon for a brand new one goodbye before I go I just want to tell you you were fantastic and you know what so was I I'm gonna take you to so many places. Rob! It means I'm gonna change. Exterminate! Exterminate! Mommy! You never know what you're gonna end up with. Hello.